I think when I didn't have a voice to be heard was was the most frustrating thing that I've ever had and the hardest thing I've had to accomplish and overcome uh, since this accident. Not being able to communicate with people is the foundation of of human life. You know, it's it's to communicate with people. And that's the first question I had to ask myself was it's just why I wanna die. It's because I can't communicate. And I didn't make any rats or come up with a a decision until I had my trait down. That's what you see around my neck. That is hooked up to a ventilator that keeps artificially alive. And I think what gave me the the ideas and also the decision was I could talk and communicate, uh, which was a blessing. It was, it was a whole, it was the monkey off my back. Monkey, monkey off my back, as they, as they will say it. But at that time, I was very concerned because it didn't change my mind. And it didn't sway my I think in any way of not wanting to live this way. And that's when I came up with the conclusion that these were feelings, these were, these were right feelings that, that I had to live with and that I was correct. It goes back to what I said before. People don't like to talk about about death. There's there's surgeons and uh, psychologists and, uh, and all kinds of different doctors that, that are trained to save save people's lives, not not take them. And I think it's just a very simple thing to say is that it takes some time for people to process this and to say, look, you know, it's not our decision. It's his decision. And I think I answered a question very, very, very properly was that I'm not choosing, you know, I've already chosen. I've already chosen and I'm of sound mind, and hopefully I can teach uh, medical and psychologists of how it is to uh, being confined to your quadriplegic body. But the most important thing is that uh, it's not something that people like to talk about is with death. So to go about it is they talk about they talk about it as withdrawing care. And that's what was pretty much brought up uh, through all the conferences and all the uh, all the meetings that has led to this point uh, is that uh, it, 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 it transformed uh, from death to withdrawing care. And people were more uh, prone and also are willing to talk about it then by just giving it a different word. A different meaning is the same. Uh, I have a 99. 
0.9% chance of not living. But there's still that 1% chance that I could live when they take a ventilator away. So you hold on to that, that 1% and you drive towards that goal, that goal line. When they hand the football to you, you got to go. When they started this process, was they were thinking about taking me to New Jersey and New Orleans. And I said, man, no one goes to New Jersey. Everybody's leaving New Jersey. You guys want to stick me into New Jersey? And one of the nurse, one of the nurses said, she said, yeah. She goes, well, you got New Orleans. And I said, you know, you really don't want me to go to, go to New Orleans because I'll come back cussing. <laughs> you, ever, you ever ordered a, ordered a hamburger out there? And she goes, no, I haven't. I said, uh, do you really want to know how to order, order a hamburger? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, first of all, you lock all your doors. You roll up all the windows. Just enough so the drive drive through clerk can hear you and when you talk to him you gotta cuss at him. You gotta tell me to give me a fucking a fucking hamburger with some fucking cheese on it and don't forget the fucking tomato. And then you roll your window your window back up and they understand. And you just go you just don't go. You go order a hamburger like you order a hamburger in Colorado. So she really, she looked at me and said, Mr. Mr. Drummond, she goes, I've inside so many cuss words in my life. I said, well, you better not try their gumbo. That chaplain Ed is from Jersey, New Jersey, and I tell him, he comes and talks to me and I tell him, I said, you know what, uh, the chaplain Ed, and he says, what's that, David? He said, I said, when you go on vacation, I said, no one says they're going to Jersey. I said, they'd lie and say they're, they're going to New York City. <laughs> I was a very mobile person. I, uh, very healthy. I, I I walked 13 miles, ran five miles. Was was avid in a taekwondo. Uh, I was a, a health freak, as they might say. You know, it's something that I just love to do. I love to take care of my my body, and uh, I was in all the sports drinks. I mean, you name it, I did it. And, uh, I was in the gym, a Denver Athletic Club that, you know, I was bench pressing three, 350 pounds at one time. And for someone to just, in a blink of an eye, uh, lose all that, I, to sit here and, and tell you I wasn't depressed is a, a flat lie. Uh, I was depressed, of course. I was confused, uh, I was frustrated, and I believe that's what took me uh, so long to come up with a, a decision because I I love myself, and to let myself go is just not something that is not put on your plate every day. I love myself, and um, I had to withdraw from all of the doctors and and social workers and and even my faith in God to to see if what I was going uh, through was a clinical depression. I knew this before. I well, I knew it 
uh, during the time that I was a, uh, as a, as I tell making uh, blowfish, you know, I was doing this number and talking to people and during all these thoughts and through all these meetings that I had with social workers and doctors and chaplains and surgeons it all this was was going through my mind uh was i was i okay you know or was i sick uh, was I depressed? Uh, was I frustrated? Uh, and I think that was the most uh, probable thing, Dr. Mart Dr. Martinez, was to realize those things, is that it's okay to be depressed as long as you seek some kind of, some kind of treatment for that depression. Uh, they said that it's okay to have these feelings, you know. It's okay, you can talk about them. And that's when I knew I was all right. Uh, that's when I knew I wasn't sick. And that I was a sound mind. And that's when I made, made my next step to a decision. Let me ask you a little bit, at the break, I was talking to some people and, uh, I wanted to see if we could probe a little more this uh, question about faith and decisions, making decisions. Yeah. And um, specifically, I was wondering, you know, you talk about your faith as a Christian uh, growing and evolving, especially after your injury. And you're probably well aware that there's some people who uh, would take uh, or, or believe and have the position that life um, is this very precious gift and that the decision to in some way actively end your life um, is, if you will, it's, um, it's in tension with that belief in a way. It's a potential contradiction to this kind of Christian faith that you're describing. And, I, I'm, I have a sense that you've thought a lot about this, so I was going to give you an opportunity to talk about that. Yeah, right. Uh, well, you're very correct. Uh, life, uh, life is very, very, pre life is precious. Uh, uh, birth is a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, women, uh, women transform. Uh, from giving birth to their child. Uh, there are certain different uh, things that change inside of a woman and inside of a man also when uh, they have a, a baby. It's a very beautiful thing. It's very precious life in general, but... When you t speak of life and living, it's a whole different thing from an artificial life and existing. I, I was taking May 3rd. Uh, if it wasn't for, uh, you know, there's people that just uh, flatly don't believe in, uh, believe in Jesus. Uh, there's people that will be probably watching this. Uh, this video that would may immediately get a, a sensation in their body where they'd feel like, you know, that they don't want to hear about that or they don't believe in the same thing. And I think that's just very important to, uh, to, to, say, uh, to say as a point, you know, and value is that there's a whole difference in living, uh, living your life and uh, being born and making decisions, uh, decisions and being able to uh, take care of yourself on your own. Then 
uh, being artificially kept alive. So is there one last thing um, you want to say? Make sure you eat your cookies. <laughs> I think it's I think uh, I think it's war down that uh, everybody should eat their eat their vegetables. So you know, make sure that yeah, make sure that you uh, uh you eat plenty of ice cream and plenty of cookies. <laughs> They try to make people uh, laugh and smile. <laughs>